right away. I'd just like to say welcome to everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. My name is Julie Kiris, and I'm a training officer with the Global Logistics Cluster. You might be thinking, where is my fellow colleague, Andre Herman? Well, he is actually on his break in service, but knowing Andre and his love for the training program, I think we'll see him pop up in some of the conversation pieces at different points today. So uh, he is probably on the call and he will probably jump in, but he's officially on his break in service. So I will be uh, leading the show for today. Josie, if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. So over the last couple of days, if you've participated in any of the sessions of the GLM, there has been some great discussion and we've been seeing themes and topics related to training showing up in multiple different areas. And I've been sitting here quietly paying attention to all those sessions, uh, looking forward to the opportunity to have a moment to engage on some of them. So our agenda today is quite simple, as you can see. Uh, we're trying not to pack too much into 30 minutes, but even still, I'm sure this will be difficult. So quickly, I will present the pipeline from 2021. Uh, we showed this the other day on Tuesday. We quickly showed some of the highlights that we have in store. And I want to bring it back to the community as well as create an opportunity where we can have some input and ideas. So that will be where we'll have some discussion that will be led using Menti again. Then, if we have time, I hope that I can do a quick presentation on our virtual reality logistics response team training. Some of you might have already partic participated in this. I can see some of our facilitators and uh, participants on the call, as well as uh, have heard some of our other presentations. But I would like to bring it to the community here today and have an opportunity again to discuss a little bit and see how we can collaborate and move this tool going forward. So, not a lot on the agenda, but knowing this community and seeing some of the familiar faces, I know that we'll have a lot to unpack and discuss. Josie, if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. So our objectives today is really to get to hear your voices and to have some engagement. So I do have a couple slides, but we are going to be using a couple of tools that will allow you to engage directly with us. So in a couple minutes, I will share a new code for Menti. This is not the same code that was used in Magnus's presentation, so I just want that to be clear if you have participated in the IM conversation already. And we will also encourage people to unmute themselves and uh, use their voice. I'm going to go a little bit rogue from the presentation here and add into the chat box at the same time a link for how you can access Mural, or sorry, Yes, Mural, and Mural is where you can add in those sticky notes. I've just created three really simple topics um, where we have questions, ideas, and comments. Probably we won't use this as an uh, app in any of the facilitated discussion today, but I'd like to leave it open until 4 p.m. today so that throughout the day, if you have any additional thoughts or comments or questions, you can go and add them in there, and then I can uh, consolidate all these ideas at the end. So with that, let's get uh, started into, into the content. Josie, next slide, please. So what is in the pipeline for 2021? You would have seen this presentation very quickly on Tuesday. And I think at this point, there's no point in, we don't even need to say it anymore, but uh, our face-to-face -face trainings have largely been put on hold because of COVID-19. We are hopeful that in 2021, we will be able to offer some. Josie, if you could click forward. And then as well as some blended e-learning opportunities with virtual reality and blended learning online. So here you can see what we have in the pipeline. First of all, we have 12 ELCI Q&A sessions that are scheduled. And to access these trainings, participants actually need to complete the online logistics cluster induction on our learning portal. And then once they've fully completed the course and passed the quiz, they automatically receive an invitation to one of the upcoming dates. These sessions are not formal trainings in the sense that we put up a big fancy PowerPoint and go through the content, but they're really more of a hotline so that participants who have gone through the training have the opportunity to directly ask questions that might have come to their minds when they were in the sessions. They're quite informal. They're an opportunity to meet other members of the community and just have that direct question answer kind of community feeling. From there, we have the logistics response team virtual reality trainings. 
we did our pilot in March and we have the next two scheduled for both May and July. May is now fully booked. However, July still has many spots available. So if you are interested, please speak to your supervisor or if you are a supervisor in one of our focal points, please promote that to your colleagues as we would love to see more participation in it. From there, we also have, you can see the whole list here. I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we have the ELITs. These are hopefully going to be face-to-face -face in both Bolivia and Ecuador. We have logistics cluster inductions planned for the regional Americas and hopefully also Nepal. Two face-to-face -face LRTs in Nepal and Dominican Republic. We are hopeful that we will be able to bring back Gear Up 2021 this year. A uh, decision will be made on that later this spring. However, we are hopeful that that will be possible. And the training of trainers in December, as well as the logistics cluster coordinator training. Josie, if you could click forward. Great, thank you. So, of course, training delivery is not the only piece that is in our pipeline. There's also the program development. And this is where we're going to open up to Mur or to Menti in just a moment and have some of your inputs. So the first thing, and I think perhaps the most popular words that have been said in the last couple of days in the GLM has been this concept of a competency framework. Here we would love to get inputs from the partnership. We have already had some consultations with some partners, but we know that this is a hot topic and many different organizations are working on it. And as much as possible, it would be fantastic if we can streamline our work so that we're not, there's no duplication of efforts and that we are aligned with each other. So if this is something that you and your organization are working on, please reach out. It would be great if we can collaborate on that. From there, we're also working on the further translation of trainings. This is something uh, that's also been inadvertently a key message over the last couple of days at the GLM. We heard that there needs to be more accessible trainings, particularly for local partners. And oftentimes that means not trainings just available in English. So we've already started working on this with the logistics cluster induction and the basic humanitarian logistics course which in now, in addition to being available in English, are also available in Arabic, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. Over the next couple months, we plan on continuing to translate additional trainings and making more courses available. We are also working on the development of new e-learnings. We have been working in partnership with some of colleagues on the call, as well as developing some content in-house. One of these trainings is going to be dangerous goods awareness, which we have heard is a topic that sometimes gets overlooked, but is critical. So we are looking at having an e-learning launch on this topic in the summer. For those of you who are frequent users of our online learning platform, you would have seen that this year we launched two additional courses. One is called Logistics Cluster Forms, which talks in detail how to do the SRF or the service request form. It's actually more of a mini training. It only takes 25 minutes, but it allows that targeted expert, uh, expert knowledge to be gained. We also added the Practical Emergency Logistics Training, or the PELT, PELT uh, which, as the title suggests, teaches the fundamentals of uh, emergency logistics. And we're going to be building out that catalog shortly to include both operational emergency logistics as well as strategic. I can see some questions that are coming in in the chat box. I will come back to those in, in a minute when we open up for discussion. So thank you. Go ahead and please keep uh, adding them in there. That's great. Next, uh, we're going to be starting a level four evaluation. So for those of you who have seen our midterm review, that looked at level two and level three evaluation on the Kirkpatrick uh, scale. Level two and three being, did you meet the learning objectives and were you able to apply it in your workplace? Level four goes a step beyond that, and it asks, what are the impacts of this training program? And so we will be launching that next week, the start of the process, and we hope to be able to deliver it by the end of 2021. And of course, we will be in very regular consultation with many of the partners on the call. And if anyone has on any advice or ways forward on that, we appreciate reaching out. And then finally, but certainly not least, and 
probably the most important piece of conversation here today is we are going to start developing the strategy for 2022 and beyond. And here, the input of the community is critical and it defines what we do. So on that note, what I'm going to do is we're going to open up and go to Menti. I will show the results as they're coming in and hopefully we can have a little bit of engagement and conversation on some of the different points. We're already well, in, we're already 10 minutes into our call, so at, at this point, it would be great to start hearing some other voices. So, Josie, next slide, please. So, here you can see the code for Menti. So, go to menti.com, and the code is And while we're waiting for some of the results to come in on Menti, I, and while everyone's logging in, I can see that there's already a couple of questions here. So I'll just go ahead and jump into some of the ones that have been put into the chat box. So James, thank you very much uh, with your comment that there's undoubtedly going to be a huge backlog of people wanting to attend face-to-face -face logistics cluster trainings and how will we prioritize? Two things that we will do for this. So first of all, we are, quite proud of the logistics response virtual reality training that we've created and think that this until face-to-face -face trainings and even once face-to-face -face trainings are available really does provide a great option to face-to-face -face learning so we are hoping that people will be applying to those virtual reality logistics response team trainings before we can even do face-to-face -face again so that will help uh, reduce the demand on the face-to-face -face when that becomes available Next, uh, of course, uh, the application process is competitive and we ask that people uh, nominate employees or colleagues and we will make sure that we have a review panel, same that we used to do for the face-to-face, -face, that included members of the community on it. So for those of you who are not familiar with the old process for the nominations for logistics response team trainings, we actually used to include three different stakeholders that helped uh, with the decision-making process. It was a blind review of the applicants. All of the applicants were scored. The, the reviews of those applicants were then tallied, and then we saw who was invited to the training. So it really was not us just making quick decisions, but the community that was engaging on it, and then looking at the best results altogether. So I'm seeing some of the responses are rolling in on the mentee. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so that we can see them and discuss them together as they're coming in. So of no surprise to me after hearing the conversation for the last couple of days and being in touch with many of you that the competency framework here is showing up as the thing that needs to be prioritized in 2021. So we hear this loud and clear and we thank you for confirming this in this, in this call today. Development of additional e-learnings coming in at second place. The strategy for 2022 and beyond third. Further translations as the fourth place and the level four impact evaluation is in fifth place. To be honest, it's hard to say which of those, in my mind, I thought would come in first. So it's good to see everyone weighing in. But I would love to open up the floor if anyone would like to raise. I see Sue has her hand up. Sue, is that a new hand? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Caught me on the way, sir. Sorry, no, I was just going to say, I did put it in the chat box, Julia, but um, on competencies, Save the Children's developed a competency framework, which we've agreed across the agency. Um, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to share it with all 78 members, but Julia, if you and I want to chat afterwards, we're happy to share it with the Logs Cluster. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Sue. And actually, uh, Megan was in touch and has shared some of the framework it, already with me, so which was which was really good. It's great. Megan and I work together on that. So uh, as long as you got from Megan, we're on target. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Sue. Does anyone else want to weigh in on any of these uh, the items that are in the pipeline or challenge any of them? Does anyone think that something should be prioritized? We'd love to have a little bit of a discussion here. Uh, 
I see so many familiar faces on the call, so please go ahead and either raise your hand or just go ahead and unmute yourselves. We'd love to get some impact input here. Uh, Peter Miller speaking. Hi, Peter. Hi. Um, just a first reflection. I think um, um, that uh, before developing a strategy, an evaluation of an impact is important to learn from, and that will help defining strategy. That's my comment. So I think evaluation before strategy development. Great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna jump on to the next question here and see what feedback has come in. So what trainings do you think are needed? I can see that answers are just flying in on this one. So further practical med logs. Okay, well noted. What's interesting, I don't know for those of you who know Menti well, but with Menti, it shows the most popular answer in the middle and larger. And right now it looks like everyone has submitted a different type of training that is required. It looks like no one has repeated the training. So that's going to make mine and Andre's work very busy to see that there is so many different topics that people would like to see available on our training platform. What languages do you need the, or what languages are trainings needed in? Okay, so we see Arabic, English, French. This is excellent um, as the, the core ones because this is where we're already working. And then I see uh, some other languages. It looks like someone wrote cold chain as a language. So perhaps that is something we need to look into. Swahili, okay, excellent, well noted. And then the next question is, what do you think should be included in the 2022 and beyond strategy? So for those of you who are seeing the mentee results coming across your screen, here we have the embedded in local institutions, national level inclusion, uh, target national organizations, impact evaluation, response playwork. So some great and some very different uh, topics there. I see that there's a, quite a few comments coming into the chat box. I want to make sure that I can get a chance to look at them quickly while we're going through this. So uh, Mary says that goal also has a competency framework which would be shared. Mary, that would be excellent. Would love to have a conversation. Sean, medical and simulations is repeated. Thank you for flagging that up for me. And Peter, you already came in with your comments. So great, thank you very much to everyone there. Does anyone, before we go into the logistics response team training virtual reality, does anyone want to share any thoughts or ideas on any of the topics that have been presented so far? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, to, to follow up. I, uh, it's more or less the same point that Peter's just put in the chat, but I think it, it bears repeating that um, it's, it's kind of a bad assumption um, that everybody in a country, if, particularly if we're talking about localization and national organizations, the assumption that everybody in a country will be able or want to speak the formal colonial language uh, is something we need to move away from. I appreciate the effort that it takes to translate things um, and then the cost of translating things as well. We all have to go through it for manuals and things, but just something for the community to bear in mind that just stopping at um, the, you know, these sort of colonial languages as an assumption that that's fine is perhaps something we need to examine. Excellent point, Mary. Thank you very much for raising that. And we see some non-colonial languages on the mural that were, um, or on the Menti story that were a little bit smaller there, but I think you raise an incredible point there and uh, something that we do need to look at going forward. So thank you for that. Any other thoughts or comments people would like to weigh in on here? Hi, Julie, this is Diego. And hi, everyone in the auditorium and, and, and uh, anywhere in the world. I, I want to jump into the competency thing because we have been discussing this for a long time with, with, with you and, and Sue and Mary also. Uh, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be maybe easier? And I, I, I jump also on, on, on Tom's comment. 
to share who has, for instance, a competency framework or, or, or has a, a the start basically of, of what a competency framework would be and maybe go through what we did during the frontline uh, human logistics initiative just to take a look at everything and try to make something common responding to like very common needs of the of the uh, the content of the uh, sector then more organizational and then more precise to I don't know specific activities I think that would be uh, again key priority then go to evaluation as Peter said and then go to the strategy that's my, my, my two cents on this. Excellent, thank you very much, Diego, appreciate that. Uh, very good point. So many people are working on the competency framework and at this point, uh, the, recreating the wheel and duplication of efforts uh, isn't ideal and there should be an opportunity for us to be able to share that knowledge across uh, with each other. So yes, I think we should, we should find a, a mechanism for where we can share that content recognizing that in some organizations uh, it is private and that they're not interested in sharing it, but see a way where we can uh, do that together. Sue, thank you very much for being here. I'm, I'm sure we'll catch up again. Uh, okay, so we only have nine minutes left in this session. So this is why we're going to leave the mural board open for the rest of the day so that any thoughts, comments, or questions can be added in there as well. I can see that some people are already on it and there's some sticky notes flying around. So that's how I'm going to stretch the session as much as I can. But I did want, with having the community on the call today, I did want to take a moment and talk about the virtual reality training that we have created and to share some ideas here and hear what the thoughts are from the community. So the virtual reality training is a bit of an experiment. We did the pilot in March, so just a couple of weeks ago. And we were very pleased with the results of it. So we'll go into a little bit of details here. Next slide, Josie. So I think the first and most important piece here is just to define what is gamification, what is augmented reality, and what is virtual reality. So that way we can understand what it is that we're doing. Next, thank you, Josie. So gamification uh, can be something simple like a mobile app where you're playing a game on your phone that requires you to make decisions that have consequences. That's a high tech version. Gamification can also include a board game or a card game. So there's a couple of different options there. Next. Augmented reality is when <laughs> you start to see the, the, wor the training world presented in front of you in real life. So, it's hard to describe a little bit, but here in this photo, what you can see is this nurse showed up in front of me on my camera or on my phone, and he showed me how to don and doff with PPE, so how to put on gloves, gown, mask, and then how to remove it properly. So he, of course, wasn't actually in my apartment, but for me, it looked like he was in my apartment teaching me how to do these steps. And then next, and then virtual reality is when you use a headset, such as the Oculus Quest 2 that we have been using. Uh, there's many other models available though. And you put on the headset, you have the controllers in your hand, and then you enter into a virtual world. And there you can meet other stakeholders. So what we've been working on here is, we've been doing a little bit of gamification, but not going to touch on that today. What we are going to talk about is the virtual reality. Next, please. So for those of you who are not familiar with the LRT, just a quick moment on that. The logistics response team training is a week-long simulation-based training that brings together multi-partners and stakeholders from across the humanitarian sector to this intense week-long session where they are deployed to a fictional emergency, are learning by doing, which also includes failing, and where there are consequences for the decisions that they make. And here you can see in these photos, people crowded around a computer, so many different partners in the same session trying to solve a problem. What works really well here is the development of community and the opportunity to engage with one another. But when we move to traditional online learning and you're clicking through an e-learning portal or e-learning platform, it's really hard to, to demonstrate or to create the kind of conversations that are taking place around these tables that you can see here. 
The picture in the top left corner there, I, I was standing over, the, uh, over those participants. That, that picture was taken at midnight. These participants had worked for 18 hours that day and are still sitting around the table trying to solve the problem. So what we've done with the next slide, please, is we've tried to take that energy of having everyone sitting around a table trying to respond to this uh, evolving crisis and to create a virtual world that mimics those dusty base camps and the dim tents that we're used to for the logistics response team training, but then more importantly, that we have that the real life conditions that we see in emergencies. So in order to do this, uh, we purchased 40 of these Oculus Quest 2 headsets, which we ship out to our participants and our facilitators. And you can see our model there is, is wearing one. Then we use a combination of Zoom and uh, email injects to really create that atmosphere of early days emergency with the emails flying in. And in the right hand side of the screen, you can see a picture from one of the other LRTs where everyone's again crowded around and then a picture from the, the uh, VR training. And I know that it doesn't look the same to you when you see those photos, that the one looks more like a computer game and the other is obviously real life. But when you're actually wearing the headset and you're in that world, it feels real. Josie, next please. Uh, so some of the things that worked well for us was that the learning objectives were achieved to the same extent that they are in a face-to-face -face LRT. And I know one of the questions that we received in an earlier session on this was, how can you say that they were achieved just because someone did a survey at the end of the training? Extremely valid point and something that we are aware of. So with the, the way we evaluate the, the training program here is that we do the initial survey at the end of the session and then after six to nine months, this is when we did the midterm review, and we went back and we asked participants, have you been able to apply what you learned? Did you actually learn it? So yes, it is a bit too early to say, and we do need to follow up, but that is something that we do plan and that we, do, we have done in the past. So participants felt like they were under pressure. One person said that they could feel their heart beating in their ears while they stood in front of the group and were presenting. And the large majority of people were able to connect and stay connected throughout the simulations. The notable ex exceptions here was we had someone in Sierra Leone, but not in Freetown, but far from Freetown, about three hours, and they had connectivity issues, but were still able to follow the majority of the training. And qu quite ironically, we had someone in, uh, in Geneva who had troubles connecting, which you would never have anticipated. I can see in the chat box, one of the questions is, is there a limit to how far the devices can go? In our case, we found that the limit has so far has been Yemen. That's a country where we have not figured out how we can get a device in country. However, we're looking at ways where we can uh, still include partners who are based there, as well as ways in which we can get the device. And then also here that the, the development of the network was successful. So the participants reported that they've never felt so close to people when they are so so far apart they've never met face to face that they really worked day and night with each other and really developed great rapport so i see that we only have one minute left so <laughs> i'm going to end here though there are a lot of lessons learned about what didn't go so well um so it's a little bit uh false to end here but would be happy to engage with anyone on any conversations going forward we will leave the um the mural board open as i said until 4 p.m cest so many sticky notes are flying around there so i will be checking in and working to answer any questions and I look forward to continuing these conversations, whether it's on the competency framework, the pipeline for 2021, or going forward beyond that, as well as the virtual reality. On my final closing remark that I would like to say here is that in March, we shared the training calendar for 2021. And one of the comments that we've heard the last couple of days of the GLM is that we need more engagement from local NGOs and the local partnership. And we 
couldn't agree more with this. So this is my call to all of the focal points that are on the call today is please share the training calendar that we provided to not only to you, the employees within your organization, but also to your local partners. We would very much like to see more participation and the best way that we can reach them is through you. So please promote that. And if anyone needs that training calendar to be resubmitted, uh, please send me an email and I will make sure that I send it out to you because I know many of you get hundreds of emails a day and it can get lost, but would be happy to, to re-forward it to anyone who needs it. So on that note, I'm right at 11.15. Thank you all for being here today. Look forward to continuing the conversation going forward. And stay tuned for the next presentation coming up in 15 minutes.